Smart contracts and blockchain technology are no doubt revolutionary. However, they do have one shortcoming, and that is their ability to access reliable off-chain data. That was until Chainlink offered a solution. My name is Guy, and in this video, I'm going to give you everything you need to know about this revolutionary Oracle blockchain. Now, as is usual, this video is for educational purposes only. Speak to your financial advisor as I'm not qualified to give you investment advice. Also, if you're new here, hola amigo. Welcome to the Bureau. While I have you, I highly suggest subscribing and turning them notifications on. Get these videos straight to your inbox. Okay, enough of the boring stuff. Let's change to Chainlink. Started in 2017 by the fintech company Smart Contract, Chainlink is a project that is attempting to connect smart contracts across blockchains. Chainlink plans to do this through the use of off-chain resources like web APIs, data feeds, and even traditional bank payments. It will allow on-chain smart contracts on other blockchains to interact with off-chain data through the Chainlink network. The project's developers believe that smart contracts may indeed change the way industries use traditional legal documents. Chainlink also believes that the underlying consensus mechanisms that smart contracts use give blockchains a way to effectively communicate with one another. In a moment, we'll discuss further how the Chainlink ecosystem works and how its link token is a significant part of that system. First though, let's take a look at some of Chainlink's real-world use cases. Arguably, the biggest development and indicator that Chainlink is building for the real world is the partnership the project has developed with the SWIFT banking network. Now, for those of you who don't know, SWIFT is the connecting fibre between most of the global banks. Money sent across borders through your bank will involve the use of SWIFT's infrastructure. Hence, forming a partnership with SWIFT is a major vote of confidence for the Chainlink blockchain. It could also lead to more partnerships with similar financial institutions. Even though SWIFT isn't solely using Chainlink, it is developing a smart oracle with Chainlink's help. If nothing else, it leaves the door open for further integration between the two companies. Oh, and Chainlink has also been chosen as an official cloud partner of Google. This collaboration will see Google place all its big query data on a blockchain by using a Chainlink smart oracle. This partnership is also notable as it is perhaps one of the few blockchain projects that Google has singled out. Now, with partners like these and a few others, the use cases with the Chainlink network are countless. These include insurance, machine to machine payments, and much, much more. The technology behind Chainlink allows users to connect to numerous nodes for data access instead of just one server. So, how does Chainlink work? Well, before we answer that question, we need to discuss an important aspect of the Chainlink blockchain, oracles. When we hear the words smart contracts, we typically think of Ethereum, and rightly so. The project has been around for half a decade and is synonymous with the term. At the time, Ethereum took blockchain technology to a whole other level. The flaw with smart contracts, however, is that they only work with the data contained within their own network. Smart contracts are a very useful tool, but they could be more useful with the ability to communicate with outside chains. Chainlink recognized this and is dedicated to filling the gap. Through the use of oracles, Chainlink pulls data from off-chain resources and uses them with data pools, APIs, and other real-world sources. With Chainlink, smart contracts can use any data resource they want. It doesn't matter what it is. Now, this is extremely beneficial for projects that need to access off-chain data. With these types of datasets, Chainlink can bridge the gap between current, traditional data and the future of blockchain technology. Oh, and the Chainlink protocol also has mechanisms in place to ensure the accuracy and trustworthiness of the data. External smart contracts are more willing to use data that has been appropriately filtered and is stored in a decentralized manner. Okay, okay, so how does Chainlink work? 
Well, since Chainlink wants to create a link between off-chain and on-chain resources, there are two primary pieces to the Chainlink architecture. An off-chain infrastructure and an on-chain infrastructure. Let's start with the off-chain architecture. The off-chain pieces of the Chainlink architecture are Oracle nodes that exist off the Chainlink network. However, these nodes are still connected to the external blockchain. Most of the work performed by the off-chain oracles is done through the collection of the data requested by the user. Requested data passes through Chainlink Core, which is the software that establishes a connection between the off-chain data and the Chainlink network. At that point, Chainlink Core takes the processed data and hands it to the on-chain oracle, which we'll talk about in a bit. Of course, these nodes aren't running a charity, which is why the off-chain nodes receive payment for the data collected and transmitted. These payments are made in link tokens. The off-chain nodes also have a secondary function that makes them useful for developers. These nodes also allow for integrating external adapters, which perform subtasks on external nodes. With these subtasks, collecting and processing data is much easier and more efficient. Still with me so far? OK, good. Now, let's move on to the on-chain functions. The on-chain smart contracts are the piece of the Chainlink architecture that houses oracles. These oracles accept and process data requests created by the user. On-chain oracles take user requests for off-chain data submitted to the blockchain, then process them. The requests are routed to the appropriate smart contract, which matches the request up with the correct off-chain data. There are three contract types that aid in matching the off-chain and on-chain data. Aggregating contracts, order matching contracts, and reputation contracts. An aggregating contract gathers data from the selected oracles, then delivers the best results to the contract requesting the data. The reputation contract determines that the oracle provider is reputable and trustworthy. If so, the order matching contract passes the requesting contract onto the corresponding oracle based on the data requested. Now, that's a lot to take in. So if you're lost, you can always read our in-depth review that I've linked to below. Now that we've covered the basics of Chainlink and how it works, let's spend a few minutes talking about the link token. Chainlink created the link token as a way to compensate off-chain nodes within its system. The token is used to pay node operators. According to the white paper, link is necessary to perform this type of functionality. Value and demand of the tokens are derived from the number of operators available that provide off-chain services to Chainlink. As more link tokens are used as the currency of the Chainlink system, the more valuable the token should become. However, some argue that link tokens are superfluous since compensation to off-chain operators and oracles should come in the form of their own cryptocurrencies. Doing so would incentivize them to keep the network open and data constant. Now, although these are ERC-20 tokens, they do have additional ERC-223 transfer and call functionality. Having this type of functionality allows the tokens to receive and process smart contracts in one transaction. The Chainlink ICO took place in September of 2017. The project raised about $35 million while distributing 350 million link tokens, so an ICO price of circa 10 cents per link. The number of tokens distributed makes up 35% of the project's total supply. Link currently ranks in the top 20 of all cryptocurrencies on CoinMarketCap with a total supply of 1 billion tokens. Currently, there are 350 million tokens in circulation, so the amount released in the crowd sale. In terms of price, Link remains one of the few projects that raised funding in 2017 with a positive return for contributors. It reached an all-time high of just above $3.50 in July of 2019. It's since cooled off, but a pretty impressive performance nonetheless. Let's switch gears now and talk about the Chainlink leadership team and its roadmap for 2020. The CEO of Chainlink is Sergei Nazarov, who started his career with Firstmark Capital. He left that position to become a part of the world of crypto in 2011. Steve Ellis serves as the Chainlink CTO and was a software engineer prior to joining the project. From a roadmap perspective, Chainlink's goal is to contribute to any Oracle network using the datasets they've already established. 
they recently announced the release of seven new public reference datasets. These datasets are for any user to incorporate into their smart contract. They're working on developing large amounts of datasets that they know users need, such as ETH to USD or Bitcoin to USD. Because people are building markets around these datasets, Chainlink can provide users with the secure dataset reference users need. By replicating these Oracle networks, they can expand to other datasets that people can then build markets around. For example, you have Synthetix, which is a project that already plans to integrate with Chainlink to decentralized price feeds. Chainlink is also hopeful that others, like the Compound Protocol, will also want to use these types of datasets. With high quality node operators in place that are able to add more security to Oracle networks, it creates a diversity of clients that can use the Chainlink system. Chainlink is interested in enabling new categories of activity like decentralized finance, decentralized insurance, fraud proof gaming, and much, much more. Anyways, let's move on to the markets for Link now, shall we? Link is a pretty popular token and it has extensive trading volume, close to $100 million a day. Chainlink does this volume on a wide variety of exchanges, including popular ones like Binance, BitHump, and Coinbase Pro. The token does at least a million dollars in volume every day on most of these exchanges. Given that the trading volume is well dispersed among these exchanges, it bodes well for the broader liquidity of the token, as well as general price discovery. Taking a bit of a closer look into the token liquidity, here, you have the Link USD order books on Coinbase Pro, and here you have the Link Tether order books on Binance. Both pretty deep and with a relatively narrow bid ask spread. All conducive to effective execution with minimal slippage. Once you have your Link tokens, you should be able to store them in any ERC20 wallet. Your best bet is probably a hardware wallet, but if you want the full list, we've provided some links below. Let's wrap this one up by giving you my final thoughts on the Chainlink project. Chainlink is no doubt solving a pertinent problem. As blockchains try to solve real-world problems, they will need access to off-chain data. Chainlink provides them with a secure and, most importantly, decentralized solution. Moreover, it has the ability to connect smart contracts with one another, which is a great way to increase interoperability between blockchains. Through Chainlink, anyone can create secure smart contracts with the ability to access key external data. Not only this, but it gives these smart contract developers the opportunity to earn financial rewards. Additionally, the project has notable partners in the form of Swift and Google. These partnerships don't only bring the project vital exposure, but they also provide great test cases for Chainlink's network. And, as far as I'm aware, there are no other projects that are attempting to solve the problem Chainlink is addressing, so it's currently in a unique position. Now, that's not to say Chainlink is a perfect project. For starters, it hasn't put nearly as much effort into the marketing front as similar projects have. Yes, the technology is impressive, but the network needs to be used by developers and integrated with other blockchains. Adoption is the word. This won't happen in isolation. Promotion is essential. The other problem plaguing Chainlink is that its blockchain only solves problems for a narrow segment. While there are several use cases for Chainlink, this could potentially hinder the overall expansion of the project if it doesn't widen its scope a bit. Either way, Chainlink is offering a unique solution to a problem that is likely to become more pressing as blockchain technology expands. So, it's definitely a project to keep your eye on. And that's it. My review of Chainlink. But, of course, this isn't just my perspective. What do you guys think? Anybody here a fan of Link? Are there similar projects I should know about? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you found this video vaguely helpful, then hit up that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Always much appreciated.